Hey, 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 what is up Facebook and YouTube? Happy Friday, everyone. I'm Nick Bell, your product specialist for the day. Um, sorry for getting started a little later um, than anticipated. I wanted to get going at um, 12 on the dot, but had some audio issues with StreamYard, so um, not my fault, but hey, uh, we I found out what the issue was, and now we are live, we are good. So let's get the uh, annoying bit out of the way. You're hearing my voice now. Let me know how that sounds. And then here's some guitar as well. Let me know how that sounds. So, you know, us product specialists, when we do these live streams, you know, we're always thinking, you know, we've been doing them for a while now. I think, uh, you know, due to the pandemic um, kind of, you know, gave birth to this idea of us doing live streams because we weren't in stores and you know doing public speaking like we used to and so if you could think about it since 2020 you know we have all these different ideas we've done so many different things so we're always trying to think of new ways um, to have interesting content and one of the things I thought of is like hey you know what let's build four tones you know, maybe, you know, four tones where you could take to almost any gig and you can get through it. Um, and so that's what I have here. I've also posted these tones in our um, custom tones. So if you want to get these for your pod go, um, you could just head over to uh, uh, over to custom tone, put in my name and bell and you should see all of them pop up. Let's take a quick look over at my screen here. So um, so here's our uh, Pod go edit. I also have an overhead for any um, foot switch uh, kind of things I want to show you, but I think we'll probably live here on, um, you know, live on this screen for the most part. So four tones to get you through almost any gig um, is just a, uh, you know, again, this is just a nice placeholder for us to have something to talk about. So if you have any questions about Pod go or Helix, whatever it may be, you know, feel free to, you know, put them in the chat and I'll answer them to the best of my ability. But pretty much these four tones I have here, I have a clean, a chime-ish kind of sound, a crunchy sound, and then a heavy sound. And so let me kind of move those to the top of the list. So I figured with these kind of four sounds, you could probably, you know, play almost any kind of style of music. And so what I did is I chose four of my favorite amps, pretty much. And um, I just, you know, outfitted these amps with a couple of effects. Of course, you could download these um, yourself and replace the effects with what you see fit. Um, let me see here, got a question coming in. Will these tones work with Helix Floor as well? So these tones, if you were to download them, you could, no, the, you know, pretty much the quick answer is no, you can't transfer these tones into your Helix. But what we're looking at today, you know, with these models, these are all models pulled from Helix. So everything you see me working with today, you could literally go onto your Helix and just copy, you know. So for example, for my clean tone, I'm using the Jazz Ribbit 120 with its matched cab. And I'm not veering off too far from what the, uh, from what the user default setting is. I think it's great. My only thing with with my pickups and my playing, I'm a pretty hard player. Um, one thing I did do is the default setting for the Jazz Rivet, the drive is at 2.8. Um, and when I dig in, I kind of hear a little bit of a clipping. So I drop this down to, you know, just two. And we have a nice clean sound. <laughs> sound I think this amp you know it's a model it's modeled after the uh, Roland JC 120 and so this is an amp that stays so clean no matter how loud it gets so we have this nice um, JC 120 um, I'm using the 212 jazz rivet cabinet with a uh, SM 57 or uh, our 57 dynamic and I'm doing an off axis angle here, but I'm, you know, really close to the speaker. For myself, you'll notice in my tones, the microphone is never any more than, you know, one and a half to two inches from the speaker. As you know, with proximity effect, the closer of the microphone is to the source of audio, the more low end it's going to pick up. And the further the mic is, the more airy and less low end there's going to be. For someone like me, I want to hear those speakers moving. I want to feel and hear that air fluctuating and so how you do that you mic close to the speaker 
And so we're here on the cap edge, one inch away from, um, from the speaker, so we're as, as close as possible. I'm not doing anything to the high or low cut. Very simple stuff, but it sounds fantastic. Now I have, um, what we have here is the uh, deluxe comp. So I have this up in front, um, right after my Crybaby right there. Honestly, am I ever going to use a Crybaby for a clean tone? Probably not. But we have the deluxe comp here, and I have the ratio down to 3-1. So that means, you know, with my threshold for every, you know, three decibels I am above that, it'll drop it one down. So it's not that aggressive. Now, if we went up to like 6-1 and 10-1, that's where you're really going to hear that kind of clacky um type of compression happening you know so if we were doing some earth wind and fire or some funk you know i would probably crank this up to at least six one but i just want my loud stuff and quiet stuff to be in the same level um same volume so that's why we're doing the two one or the three one right here giving me a nice sound now if i turn this compressor off you notice it's not a huge difference but this just kind of keeps everything sounding good I put my uh, volume pedal after um, the amp here because if we have the volume in front of the amp, this is going to, you know, when I start to turn the volume down, it's going to react a lot like how the volume knob on our guitar does, which is going to start off by lowering gain and then volume. Whereas after the amp, you'll notice it doesn't start rolling off gain. It's just, it's like having a master volume, right? Um, very common with high gain stuff as well, which you'll see. Uh, with Podgo, as you know, we have a semi-fixed placement, so there will always be this EQ in your signal path. Of course, you could change it from a parametric to just a simple you know, EQ or a simple low and high cut. But for me, I'm just going to leave that off. Um, this is kind of like my last line of defense, if you will, when it comes to you know, ensuring everything is sounding good. Now what I did add in regards to effects is this dynamic plate and just move stuff around just a little bit just so we can hear that reverb. And I have my audio going through logic here so sometimes I have to hit play because of the latency because I have so much going on in my system currently that um, that CPU usage gets used up. So. Not too bad, we're at the mix of 25%, again, using the dynamic plate here. Not too bad of a sound. So I love reverb, that's a nice plate reverb. Now if we want, we could add in this 70s chorus, and so that's what I have here, and we turn that on, and we have a beautiful chorus sound. All right, sorry for those raw notes there, but one thing I want you to hear is we have chorus. But then when we look at this mode right here, um, you could either go from chorus or vibrato. And so what I've actually done is I've assigned this by right clicking here, I assign this to foot switch five. And so taking a look here on the overhead, if I go into stomp box mode, right here on foot switch five, when I hit that mode switch, taking a look here, I'm going from chorus to vibrato. And so I could kind of get this, I could kind of get this rotating speaker kind of a sound, if you will. So if you imagine, if I'm right here, turn, turn it off. Let's turn it on. So how I got here is, of course you can set the chorus rate to note subdivision, um, but I thought it sounded pretty good at just keeping the chorus, um, the, the rate at 2.0 here. But as for the vibrato, um, I actually am syncing this um, you know, to, the, to the BPM. So at 120 beats per minute that I have that set, I'm at, 
the note subdivision of an eighth note. So that just gives a really fast vibrato where it almost sounds like a rotating speaker. And, you know, when it comes to the simplicity of pod go, you know, I, we can fill up these, uh, you know, these effects, um, these empty effect slots, you know, rather quickly. So kind of getting, you know, a two for one punch here, um, instead of having a rotary speaker somewhere, I could kind of get that out of the 70s chorus. And of course, any other chorus that does vibrato, you can do that as well. I just love the 70s chorus based off of, uh, you know, Bossy E1, beautiful sound cor sounding chorus. So that's what we have there. Cool little trick, you know, again, just added that vibrato um, to a foot switch and I could just quickly hit that at any time in the gig. And, you know, I have a chorus that doubles as kind of like a rotating speaker, if you will. So very, so a lot of fun there. And then um, finally, you know, what's a preset without some delay, right? So we're using this Adriatic delay, um, thanks to our sound, you know, the chief sound designer, uh, Ben Adrian. Uh, he made this awesome sounding delay. And so what I have going on here is the note is synced um, to a quarter note to my 120 beats per minute. I have a little bit of noise coming in, um, and the uh, size of the files here are, you know, 4096. Now, if we went lower, you're going to get a little bit of that weird distortion kind of noisy sound. So if you want to get, you know, into the weeds with that, um, feel free. But what I do have going on here, and this is with, you know, all stereo delays, obviously, you know, automatically with, you know, Podgo, anything after the cabinet for like a reverb, delay, chorus, it's automatically going to be in stereo, um, but for those Helix users out there, you have the choice, mono or stereo. Now, when you choose stereo, you have the scale parameter. So with the scale parameter, you can get a lot of cool sounds out of your delay. So for example, scale at 100%, that means that my repeats are always gonna be in a, you know, are always gonna be quarter note. So let's hear how that sounds. So you have that little yeah, you can start doing some pretty cool stuff it almost sounds kind of EDM ish even though I'm kind of ripping off the Andy Summers here so that's what we get quarter notes scale at hundred percent but when I drop this scale down to let's say 75, what it's doing, um, if I recall correctly, it's actually um, delaying the right side by uh, 750 milliseconds, something like that. So now you get kind of like almost like a dual delay sound. <laughs> can take just a simple delay stereo delay and um, you know move that scale down to 75 and you can get some really cool thick lush delays so that's our clean right there nice and fun you know you can't go wrong anytime with a, a jazz rivet 120 if you're looking to stay clean moving over we have chime ish and so uh, I was just thinking you know what's a you know, funny little name I can give that guy right there. And so Chime-ish, we got um, our SX A30, so it doesn't get any more chimier than this. And um, just to kind of hear what we have. <laughs> This one may be a little quieter, um, at least to my ear, so let's crank this up a bit. So we have our A30 here. I'm not, I'm not really uh, venturing away too far from, uh, you know, from the model default that we have here. I may have moved the cut around a bit. And as you know, with these, um, you know, Class A amplifiers, uh, especially you know, the, the one that this is modeled after, a lot of the tone comes from that cut. 
But you'll notice um, I've moved the AC ripple up and turned the bias excursion down. And so it, with setups like this, when you turn the bias excursion down, um, you know, we're talking kind of like different parts of the power tubes here, right? So when I pretty much in layman's, if you turn this parameter down, you're going to get a tighter low end. Um, if you crank this parameter up, um, you're going to get kind of a looser low end and more of a, you know, more of a, maybe that vintage sound, if you will. Um, you know, but for me, I love the tightest, just tight low end there is. AC Ripple um, just gives a, it, it's more of a feel almost than a sound, than a tonal thing. And um, of course, when you have amps where the master volume is cranked, um, parameters such as Ripple and Bias Excursion can give you not only different tones, but different feels as well. And, you know, that's a testament to the modeling that we have here because, you know, you're experiencing the true reaction on what's happening um, in these analog circuits that we model. So I have the rip, the AC ripple turned up, bias excursion turned down. It feels good to my hands, but of course to you. Get this amp and move these power amp controls around. Um, even if you may not understand 100% what you're going to get out of them, um, you know you, you can just have a whole lot of fun. So that's the amp we have there, the cabinet. I'm using the 212 Silver Bell, but I changed the mic out to the 47 condensed um, FET here. And um, I'm on the cap edge. And again, like I said earlier, I'm only, you know, one and a quarter inches away from the speaker. Again, the closer you are to the speaker, the more, you know, low end and just punch you're going to, you know, you're going to get. I love this microphone for so many things. Anything from a, you know, if you want to do anything from the Beatles to, you know, to death metal, whatever it may be, this mic is just really, really good. So we have, um, that's what's going on there. And of course we see our deluxe comp here. I probably put this in front of almost every preset of mine. It just tightens everything up and just make sure everything just, just sounds good. It, it, it's just my, it's my secret sauce, if you will. Um, I always have a compressor going. Um, you know, the trick here is your ratios, you know, don't set them too high. But since we're working with a uh, class A, I thought the 4-1 would be good. You know, and the low end on this amp is just... Now, again, if you're listening to this on a phone, an iPad, computer speakers, you're probably not getting that full... Um, you know that full tone in your face, but yeah listening to it through my you know HS 7s here sounds really good very groovy So we uh, just accomplished what we're using um, for compression our amplifier In regards to uh, reverb. I just want a little bit at the end. Um, so we're using the dynamic room here um, So it's just barely there. Um, let's take a quick listen so. You know, it's just it, it's just a little tail right there, just so you can hear some air. Because you know, me personally, I do not like just a dry track unless I'm, of course, recording, you know, layers of rhythm, you know, in the studio. But otherwise, when you know, even then, just having a little bit of space um, after your tone just you know makes all the difference. So we're using the dynamic room, and then of course, nothing I think pairs better to with a uh, class a amplifier than this deranged master which is a uh, model after uh, what is it the dallas range master treble booster and so um when you think of guys you know i, I think the most popular player to use this um, kind of combination would be brian may and so when you crank this up you know the treble and everything is just in your face so you may have to move um the settings around i turn the drive down a bit probably you know, probably about five, six or six clicks from the uh, from the default. And so this thing is very sensitive, lots of gain, lots of output, but it just has that sound. Let's go into single coil mode. Let's see the kind of chirps we get. Humbucker. 
there you know but I could probably even crank that drive up a little bit to tell you the truth let's go to like 5.4 let's go up you know one whole point there <laughs> As you can see, you could have a lot of fun with that effect there as well. And then finally, you know, I use that Adriatic delay again. Um, you know, that way if you're looking for kind of that, you know, kind of double delay, you have that as, as, as well right there. Um, so cool. Um, looking at the chat there, doesn't look like we uh, really have any questions, but we got some viewers. So thank you guys for sticking around and listening to um, my attempt of playing guitar. Uh, but other than that, let's finish finish off in the home stretch here we got two tones um, to go so crunchy so what I think is a great crunch sound is the Brit P 75 the park 75 on the bright channel here and so you just kind of move these around um, you know move the move the parameters around to you know your playing style what you see fit this is a very dynamic amplifier it could get real dirty and it could get extremely clean as well I moved the ripple and the excursion not as much as what I did with the um, with the Class A amplifier that we had, but here you just have yourself a classic British sounding amplifier. I think it sounds great. Let's give us a little more volume here. That's probably a bit much. Let me know if I'm pushing the limits there. So, very crunchy amp. The um, what I'm using here to kind of make this amp sound. Um, before I jump over to the reverb, what I'm using here to kind of warm this amp up and really anytime I'm using a, uh, you know, like a classic marshall -y sound, that British sound, um, this would have even worked great with the, uh, with the uh, SX830 we were previously looking at. But I have this LA Studio Comp after the amp. Now this is a uh, modeled after an LA-2A um, studio compressor and so anything from drums, uh, vocals, uh, bass, guitar, literally every, anything um, and everything in a studio setting would, would be sent through this thing. And it just, whatever you got going on, this makes it sound better. Um, it, 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 especially in Helix when I have, you know, everything in the kitchen, in the kitchen sink. I probably put this at the end of ev at, at, after my cabinet in almost every preset I have going on. So your peak reduction, it sets kind of high in the user model default. So I would go down to around five. Um, you know, the thing about this compressor is it's more, not so much about volume and level. It's more so, at least from my understanding, um, frequencies play a big role into how this compressor works. And that's where you have the emphasis here. Now, I encourage you to, you know, go on Google and um, read up about these studio compressors and see exactly what the emphasis does. But all I know is, you know, at lower settings, it affects a certain set of, uh, of um, frequencies and at higher settings, another set of frequencies. So, um, Chad Boston in the house. How's it going, man? Pleasure to see you. Um, so, yeah. Um, Keep him, you know, keep that in mind with this compressor. It's very, very usable. It's very um, kind of like I said, the secret sauce. Um, it, it, any Van Halen fans out there, um, you know, this was his secret sauce. You know, so this was at the end, um, you know, his his, his mic'd up uh, cab signal was sent into an LA two A, and if you crank the gain on this, your volume and your gain is just going to get more and more buttery and good. 
So that's what I have going on here. Emphasis is set in the middle. So feel free to read a bit more about it and um, use it in your tone creations. Um, because if I was to turn it off, you're going to hear a huge difference. <laughs> Let's turn this off and see the difference that we have. Now let's turn it on. So as you can tell, the volume definitely increases, especially when you put it after the amp, but it just warms everything up. Now the reverb that I'm using is the dynamic ambience. And so this is literally, if you're looking for, um, for that room sound, um, because as you notice with the new cabinets here, you know, this is an all IR based, uh, speaker cabinet system that we now have, but, um, you know, it, in the uh, classic cabs, um, you know, we had modeled the uh, room sound, which was called early reflections. And so we don't have that with these cabinets, but with this dynamic ambience, it surely does make up for it. So if you're looking for something really small, just a little bit of air, a little bit of dynamic with your sound, um, uh, with the dynamic of your sound, um, add a dynamic ambience reverb. Um, for me, I turned up the room size to 12 milliseconds and, um, you know, move the diffusion and damping around just so it doesn't sound too dark or too bright when I hear that reflection. Let's hear what we have right now for comparison. So you can hear that, you, you can hear that tail. So when you look at the uh, shape um, parameter, um, currently it's even, but I could uh, go back and make the uh, shape of the reflections to be either early or late. And the later you make them, the larger the reverb is going to sound, but also um, the more kind of bounciness you're going to get. So what I did here is I assigned shape to a foot switch. And by looking at the foot switch here, that's this guy here. And so when I turn this on and off, what's happening is I'm going from an even normal uh, shape to late, and I'm up to 85 out, 85 out of 100. So what's going to happen is the reverb's going to increase and almost sound kind of doubled. So I thought, hey, in a live setting, you know, you have, you know, that nice kind of, that kind of nice little uh, slap back. We crank that up to late. Now it sounds like almost a completely different reverb. Go back to even. So as you can see, you know, same reverb, I just moved one parameter and I just got a completely different voice out of it. Um, taking a look at the chat here, um, Chad, so glad to have you in the chat today. Uh, gr so great to see you doing great. Hope you are recovered from NAM. I am. Thankfully, I did not get the um, notorious NAM Thrax. I know a couple others did. Um, you know, but hey, what do you expect? A room filled with people all over the world, it's going to happen. But I thankfully um, did not get any of the NAM Thrax, so we are good here. Um, Orlando, thank you for your kind words. Much appreciated. We love having you in the chat today, so thank you for being a part of today's stream. Um, let's see here. Danny, are you using a single coil or a humbucker? You know, Danny, I'm actually going back and forth. Um, using this Pacifica, my uh, tone knob here is a... Um, is a kind of a push pull thing. So if, if you think, if it sounds like a single coil in one, dem in one demonstration and a humbucker in another, um, you would be correct because I am going back and forth, um, you know, as I'm doing these different tones. And so good ear, thanks for uh, chiming in, but um, beautiful. Uh, 
thank you guys so much for uh, being a part of today's stream. Having this communication and um, this involvement is just exciting and a lot of fun. So taking a look here, we're in the home stretch here. Um, we got one more preset after this, but just wanted to show, um, I'm using a transistor tape delay here. Honestly, guys, nothing out of the ordinary. Very, you know, uh, very expected, if you will. Um, what did I set here? Because uh, I built these tones a couple days ago. Yeah, just a quarter now. Just a full on classic, classic delay. You know, and quarter note is always a lot of fun. Yeah, right? Sorry, I'm sorry about those dead notes today, guys. And it's been a while since I've actually really, really picked up the guitar. But other than that, look at the distortion here. I'm using a Minotaur. Love this overdrive. Um, it's probably one of my favorites. So let's hear what it does to our signal. Add that Minotaur. Beautiful sound. So great sound, simple setup, you know, beautiful stuff here. So that's our crunchy. Let's finish it off with a bang, everybody. And we have our heavy sound here. So my one of my most favorite um, soul crushing amplifiers that we have, if you will, would be the Line 6 Electric. So what we have here at the beginning of the chain is the Horizon Gate. If you are looking for a noise gate that just does the job incredibly well and it doesn't take a whole lot of guesswork on you know setting a threshold how long is the gate open how long until the gate closes um use the horizon gate you and the thing is is yeah i'm using a high gain sound but i'm not doing anything too crazy here but i find myself of course use the guitar mode authentic for the gate range and i never go above you know one um so as we can see here i'm at 0.8 Let's hear the kind of tone we have right now. And this is the sound we have. Let me give us a little more volume. I swear these sounded louder when I um, put them together earlier, but I'm looking at my feed going to you guys and I see the dip. Like that is just a brutal sound. Very noisy, very heavy, lots of fun. So using the Line 6 Electric, we're going into a 412 Cali V30, and I'm using a 906 Dynamic. Again, like I said earlier in the beginning of the stream, I'm under an inch and a half here at one, um, at an inch and a quarter. Um, you know, practically right smack dab in the middle of the, uh, of the cone. Really, really dig this sound. And yeah, as you notice, I'm not doing any low or high cuts here, so everything's coming through. Um, but of course, never feel afraid to kind of, you know, crank up that low cut a bit. If you think it's sounding a little muddy, I would go anywhere from 40 to 60 hertz. You know, and so doing that could kind of tighten up that low. You see, it already sounds tighter. So, um, what else do we got going on? So that's our cabinet, that's our amp. Um, we just 
went over how we have the horizon gate and hey what do you know there's that deluxe comp and so i have that deluxe comp there again also a lot of the settings are all the same but I have the ratio set up to 6-1 because I just really want everything to be tight. And when you think of like metal and just, you know, just heavy sounding high gain amplifiers, um, you know, there, there's not a whole lot of dynamic in regards to to the tone, at least to my ears, when you, you know, when, when you're listening and even playing with, the, with that kind of music. You know, when you think of like, listen to ACDC, Van Halen with Marshalls and stuff, there's so much dynamic with that volume knob and everything. But when it comes to metal, it's just, you know, balls to the wall constantly. So that's what we got there. Taking a look at my dynamic ambience reverb again, um, I'm just using a 10 millisecond room size. So just enough to hear that compression. So there's that delay from my logic. Let's hit play and now. Now we are good. So again, with the shape, remember in um, the crunchy preset, I had this set to uh, to to be late, um, for the shape to be late, which gave us kind of a bigger sounding reverb. Here, I've assigned it to a foot switch. So again, here we are with that foot switch, we see shape assigned. And what happens is I'm going from even to early. And so I may even push this a little more earlier just so the effect is um, more noticeable but when I think of metal like this when you think of you know metal bands with more than one guitar player um, you you can hear that there's two happening at once and so for example <laughs> Now let's turn on that shape where now it's early. Let's turn that shape to be even earlier. It almost sounds like there's two guitar players. So as you can tell, that shape does make a difference. I'll put that back to even. And then finally, I thought, hey, a pitch wham, you know, should work out. I don't think I need to demonstrate that. I think we all under we all know what that'll do for us. But other than that, guys, all these tones are ready to go on our custom tone. Um, let me see here if I have it. Uh, do, 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 do. Yes. So. Taking a look here, um, I'm just on custom tone. Um, so if you go to custom tone and search tones and bell, like what you see here, you'll see these tones that we were working with today, the clean, the chimus, crunchy, and heavy. And um, we have LWL6, which stands for learning with line six, which is, our, which is what we're calling our segments here on Facebook and YouTube um, on our live stuff here. So with that being said, guys, that is really all I had for you. Let me take a quick look at the chat here, make sure I'm not missing anybody. Like that drive pedal, my favorite too. Great to hear, Orlando, beautiful. Well, without further to do, without further to do guys, um, I hope you guys have a great weekend. Thank you for joining, happy Friday. Um, be safe and have fun out there. We will see you uh, next week on our next stream. So other than that, thank you again. Um, if you have any questions, put us in, put them in the chat. Um, if you're looking for links to those tones or anything like that, but just remember custom tone and bell, you'll find all my presets there. Other than that, thank you guys so much. It's been my pleasure and um, we will see you next week. Thank you so much.